Hey guys, welcome back. Carter Bits be tripping. Glad to have you with me. You want to catch this if you are currently cryptocurrency mining, even if you're new to kind of understand what the dynamics that are about to occur over the next few years, especially if you're making investments right now in getting into cryptocurrency mining, because maybe you just discovered it, or maybe you've had some mining rigs for quite a long time. And you're just trying to understand the dynamics that are at play right now with rising hash rates, with some of the discussion that you're hearing, maybe on Ethereum, with possibly burning fees, which are part of the, the incentive package that's included with mining uh, when you mine a, a particular network. Two possibilities of uh, Ethereum uh, transitioning, which has always been on the on the forefront for them, to proof of stake, and then what happens? Where does that hash power go? And what incentivizes people over to other networks? And what's the real impact? Uh, in this, I'm going to try to do a quick overview, and then we're going to switch over to a model that I've been producing and working on and really looking to solicit feedback from you guys, too, to make sure that I'm capturing all of the you know angles and scopes that we need to look at. So bottom line, this is an introduction into what happens if Ethereum moves to proof of stake and the current hash rate that's on Ethereum, where does it go? And what, what does the other coins in general, this being the first part of the model, only has Raven in it right now. Um, but as I add more coins to it, what do their, their price performance discovery need to get to to be able to intake the hash rate over to the network. If Ethereum moves away, you know, in an accelerated schedule, or if it's you know a couple of years from now, what at the current rate of growth, what uh, what other network has to be at some value uh, from its price to be able to absorb that hash rate? So what we're going to get into is the first model part, which is Ravencoin. I do plan to add ETC and uh, VTC and a few of the other coins uh, to make the model more comprehensive. Uh, in addition, I'm going to add in a feature that has EIP-1559 specific to the proportional hash power that will most likely move over predicated on other prices of other currencies such as Ravencoin and uh, Ubik and some of these other coins that are out there that you can mine with your GPUs. So right now, I'm going to we're going to go ahead and step into the model and I'm going to set the stage for you guys of how this is calculated. So the first step is, is identify both cryptocurrency networks and their size when it comes to hash rate. And that's the reported hash rate out there. It's always a moving figure. It's always kind of a rolling wave on the calculation of estimating how quick a block gets solved and the particular block target time. And in this case, Ethereum is about 14.7 seconds to 15 seconds. How quick does those blocks get solved? And then it retargets the difficulty to ensure that that block consistency is around the same time. That's where we say that here the hash rate dictates, you know, the difficulty, difficulty dictates to keep the block producing at the rate that has been suggested by the chain itself. So in this case, Ethereum's 15 seconds. So we take the Ethereum hash rate and we take something like the Ravencoin hash rate and we look at its block time being one minute. So the very first part of this calculation I have to do is step up how many Ethereum are produced in that same one minute. So that's essentially four Ethereum blocks and you'll see that in the sheet. And then you'll see what's the projected value. Now it's taken Ethereum's projected value in that one minute block time based on the total transaction fees plus you know the block reward for Ethereum. And that right now is around four coins per 15 seconds and then you times that by four. That's where we get the around 16 Ethereum coins is equal to the one minute coin distribution of something like Ravencoin which is 5,000 thousand and some change uh, coins. That's why the price does not, and you'll see in this calculation, the price does not need to be that high for Raven due to its current existing out there supply of inflation rate that it has. So it's inflating every every one minute 5,000 coins th and it won't have its first halving for almost another year, right? So then that'll drop to 2,500. It holds the same halving properties as Bitcoin. So right now it doesn't take a large price point for Raven coin as an example to, to need to carry the weight of the amount of hash power that's on Ethereum. So the next aggregate that we're looking at is what is the comparison of one GPU mining Ethereum and its hash rate compared to that same GPU mining something like Ravencoin and what's its reciprocal hash rate? And this isn't a perfect science to each card because some cards are better than others. 
um, for the given hash rate. But for this first model attempt, I've essentially have the amount of hash rate. So if something was 30 mega hash on Ethereum, it's about 12.5 to 15 mega hash when it's mining cup how the algorithm that ravencoin has so that's my first assumption until i can get most of the the base figures by gpu type in there in there we'll we'll get a more cleaner um model but right now we're using about half the hash rate equivalent the next factoring is how do we determine how much hash rate is actually gpus on ethereum and there's been some analysis with like reading the nonce and the headers of when blocks are produced to try to deduce that it's an ASIC uh, farm versus like a, a GPU farm. I've left this as a variable in there and where I'm putting the variable at right now, based on the growth and based on what's been on Ethereum's history, I'm putting ASICs at about 40% in this calculation. That could absolutely change and we can absolutely change it. It may go more than 40%. I think we'll get a better leading indicator here in the future if Ethereum hits the 1559 EIP, they release that, block rewards drop to two, and now we start doing the math on figuring can GPU still participate on this network? If the answer is no, post EIP 1559, where it's just not profitable for even the most of the most uh, efficient GPU setup, there's a high chance that the majority of the remaining hash power on there is ASIC only because ASICs are going to be now almost five times more efficient than a traditional GPU. So, I mean, we'd have probably more of an 80-20 split working its way to 100% once GPUs are no longer efficiently mining on ethereum but for right now we're going to put it at a 60 40 split meaning 60 percent if we can deduce that 60 percent of ethereum's hash rate current hash rate 420 odd tera hash worth of hash rate if 60 percent of that which is what this is calculating moves over at a hundred percent to like something like ravencoin just below i've put in there 100 percent of that quote unquote 60 percent total eth network Divide it by two because the hash rate isn't one to one. You know, again, it's that 30 hash rate, 30 mega hash hash rate on one card is 15 in on Raven. So I'm taking that at 60% to get the size of pi. And then I'm having that to give us a kind of a real reflection or really close to a real reflection of what the amount of hash rate that would hit Raven Coin the network. And that's where you see against the 100%, 70%, and 50% if it's moved over, divided by two, added to the current Ravencoin hash rate. And then I've taken those three models and fixed them just below for you guys to show what would be the difficulty, what would it rise to if that was the case, and what would be the yield that you would get on an example machine. So on this, I'm using a eight times RX 580 rig with eight gigs of memory. And that machine would run about 1120 watts at about 100 mega hash total for Ravencoin. So that's the, the example. As the model matures, I'll add in, or we can have a drop down and you can pick any sort of type of GPU or type of rig to start to do your own calculations, you know, large farms, medium farms, all that sort of thing with the right calculations in there. So then you can start to figure out like, okay, what's Ravencoin's price have to be? And this is why it's also important to add in the other crypto networks that are mineable by GPUs because the totality of networks that are out there, there are networks being held up by GPUs that people are taking more of a, a speculative or a, you know, kind of like a dark horse. I want to go for this, this one off that might be the next thing. And people are spec spec mining those particular coins. That's why there's there's hash rate on those coins. So I'm not looking at the totality of all potential GPUs force projecting to a single coin. I'm looking at it from just what's on Ethereum and then that transferring over if it's a one to one or, you know, at 100 percent, 60 percent or 70 percent or 50 percent. Understand as the model matures, we'll we'll get better, at, you know, figuring and then we can take historicals to see how well the model performed. But I wanted to give us a baseline and right now as it sets you'll see in the sheet here 910 satoshi level uh roughly 810 to 910 satoshi level and at the current btc price and the ravencoin price we're looking at about you know 40 to 50 cents ravencoin 
total price about about a 5x from where it's at right now to where it would have enough depth in the yields that would be garnered from those you know even if 100 percent of the, the hash rate came over from ethereum where ravencoin could sustain from a minor profitability at even at break even so obviously if raven pushes past a dollar um, plus because the amount of coins that are inflated in it we would have it more profitable than even eth as it stands right now so again, it was a lot of talking. I try to make this as clear and concise as possible. You guys can see the spreadsheet. The link is in below. And obviously representing miners or being one of the representative of miners out there for the upcoming EIP 1559 call that's coming up this next Friday. It's at 8 a.m. my time. I believe it's 8 a.m. my time. I have to check that again, but I'll make sure it's down in the description below um, the exact time. Again, this is a community call that's going to be talking to the effects of EIP 1559. And I plan on having at least one live stream before that. I would like to have it with some of the community members out there. So some of the crypto other channels that are out there, if it's even just a Zoom call and if people can keep their cameras off, it doesn't matter to me. I care who actually joins, but having a minor call ahead of that just to ensure we have an alignment from our understanding from where the benefits and uh you know weigh the benefits versus risk to that and then i can properly represent the mining community from at least a a recent feedback loop from you guys so i do want to set that up i would like to set it up for either tomorrow or sunday just to have that discussion with you guys if that's the 19th or 20th of february uh, 2021 we can set that up for a meeting with everybody hopefully you guys will be able to join um, otherwise you guys can set them from the chat below and we'll be able to take some of that feedback but i want to make sure that the my contribution to that effort is done through some level of uh calculus statistics on known knowns and then what's the immediate effect regardless of what happens with the minor tip fee on 1559 I want to make sure that people uh, a direct awareness that if this occurs and the rates are this and the price is this this is what happens to the hash rate it will come off because you're going to reduce it quite a bit and there's other tokens that out there are going to be more profitable and it's just the nature of the incentive mechanism it's no hard feelings um it's as people would say it's purely business for a lot of people um some people are very deeply vested in the currencies themselves they may be participants in other ways with DeFi or something to that effect but bottom line it is a cause and effect that if a reward incentive drops and something else has came up you're going to have a natural um, deviation of that hash power uh, i wanted the modeling ahead of that meeting to be able to discuss it with not just throwing figures out of nowhere that we at least have a community model being built and that you guys can help participate and and help me you know organize that as most efficiently as possible so hopefully this has been a quick good one and some of these are out there the links are below again i will catch you guys on the next one thanks again